here we go. We're going to do another palette knife painting today. A beach scene. Um, a dirty old panel. This is a canvas panel, so it's hardboard with canvas stuck to it. So there's not a lot of bounce like a normal stretch canvas. They're all different, but it's going to be fun. So I'll just measure this up. We're going to do a little beach scene with a bit of a headland. What's that? Say 16, 8. We'll go just under halfway. Get a bit of a horizon line happening here. Because when you paint water, if it's not straight, it'll fall out of the side of the painting. No one will like it. Here we go. All right. So I'm just making up a composition today from other stuff I've done in the past, but you can go from photos or whatever you like. So I want to have a little bit of a horizon line there for the ocean. And I'm going to put a bit of a headland over here. Bit of a bit of a beachy thing and probably just to balance it out. Put a sandbar there. Now we can start throwing some colour at it. All right. So these are oils that I'm using today. This is a nice titanium white. You go through a fair bit of paint with palette knife because you're putting it on, there's a lot of texture. It's thick. So with a brush you thin it out and it's you don't use as much, but this will go through a fair bit. So you can do the same, same thing with acrylics. No problem. So this is Thalo Blue. Thalo Blue's got a lot of depth. It's beautiful. Um, and here. I've got Mozzie attacking me here too. Um, this one's a French Ultramarine. Always have a pair of pliers handy because these things seize up pretty bad sometimes. So that's a French Ultramarine. So you see that's, that's a beautiful deep colour and your French Ultramarine's a lot lighter but it's it's funny, you'll notice when we put it on the palette, when you put this next to that, it seems to have a purple look to it once they're next to each other on the canvas. So, here we go. We'll start whacking some colour on. So I'm going to flip this little puppy upside down, which we quite often do. It just makes things a bit easier for me. So I'm going to start putting the sky in first. So... We want this just a tiny little bit of colour in here, so it's quite light, almost white, but not quite. Just mix it in nice, so it's just off white. Because you notice in your in your sky, it's always a lot lighter at the bottom, and the deeper colours come the further you look up. So this is just easier to put it upside down to get a nice straight line. It's good fun. Palette knife's great because you can actually just plaster it on. It's a bit like plastering a wall, I guess. We want to have lots of texture in here, so I'm just going to go around this nice and rough. I'll get too pretty with it. Didn't mix up enough. That's often the problem. Here we go. Okay, it probably looks a bit confusing, but now you'll see where we're coming from. There you go, look at that. So we're going to leave a lot of this texture in there. That's why we use the knife rather than a brush. So now we'll start putting a bit more colour, a bit stronger. And French Ultramarine is just gorgeous when you put it in. Escape or a beach scene of some sort. So obviously, if you've got a photo of a of a scene, you can be a little bit more specific, you know. But this is just—I just love palette knife because it's just so much fun to play with, and the texture is really amazing. So once we start putting 
the headland and everything in. We start using a lot of thick paint and put some people on the beach, playing with some boats and get a bit of action happening. So you don't have to be as detailed as you do with the brush sometimes. It's just nice and free. So I'll just start blending all this together. But like I said, we don't want to get too fussy because you want to have you want to have a little bit of texture. And that's the whole idea of this palette knife, it just looks wonderful. There we go, a little bit more. Okay, get rid of that. So as you can see, we go through a fair bit of this um, this white. So that's what's that? Two hundred mil. It's a bit expensive, but it's that's good. Here we go. This colour here. The thalo is just so bright and beautiful. So we're going to put that next to that French ultramarine and you watch it just vibrates together. It's gorgeous. Look at that, totally different. So that's, as soon as you put this on, that looked blue before, but now it's taken on a real purpley look. So that's good. We'll have it a bit darker up towards the top. So you don't want to scrape it too thin, you want to have a bit of texture left, a bit of buttery feel to it. I'll lighten this up a bit now. Yeah, so maybe sometimes you're better off if you haven't got a lot of money, you can certainly go through and use acrylic with this. It's a lot cheaper, but oils just seem to have such a beautiful Beautiful finish on them. Just fill in a few gaps. And even though I'm blending these two colours together here, it doesn't matter if it overlaps a bit and some of it mixes in. Looks good. Make sure we cover all the canvas. And darken that up a bit now. So it's good, you get it right on the palette, you know exactly where it's got to go. Sometimes mixing it on the board can lead to a bit of frustration. So we get it half right on the palette, you're in business. So you can push it around. So what I'm doing, I'm using that this top edge a lot for the scraping part and then use it more just flat straight across for those other smoothie parts. Just play with it, it's so many different effects you can get with it. A bit more, a bit more colour.
as long as there's no harsh lines and it just blends in. Look at that, lovely. Okie dokie, uh, I need a rag. So if we're happy with that, in back here. I've got a mosquito annoying me. That happens. I'm on Tambourine Mountain in Queensland on the Gold Coast, hinterland, up on the hill. It's full of blooming mozzies up here sometimes. They drive me mad. There we go. That looks good. Okay, so with the water, so what we've done, we've got a nice light colour in the background, off in the distance, and then your beautiful colour gets a lot richer as you come up into the sky, and it's a bit opposite for the water. Generally, it looks a lot darker in the background. Depends on the day and the sun, but quite often that's the case. And then it'll lighten up as we get closer to us, so... Got to try and do this without the mozzies eating me. Sorry about that. Here we go. So that's the same colour. That's just the the same blue I've used up there, the thalo. So it looks nice and rich and deep. You know, some paintings I, I start, they take weeks. I'll spend six weeks on one painting sometimes. It just depends. There's so many different styles. But what I'm trying to show through these lessons is it's just so easy just to let your hair down and just you don't have to fuss over doing major works every time you pick up a brush. There's just so much fun you can have just quickly putting something on canvas and getting a real joy from it. So... I'm not being too fussy with this because I'll come and build that up a bit more later. Um, put a bit more darks. So with this water, I'm keeping, as you can see, I'm scraping it, a lot of it off. So I'm not, not going too thick on the water here because I'm going to bring back some other colours over the top. And if I put it on too thick straight away, it's going to turn into a big muddy mess. So I'll just keep it nice and thin for now. So we've only used two colours so far, there's the two different blues. The French Ultramarine and the Thalo. And look at that, there's still a lot of variation there so you can limit your palette. It's not always that important to have heaps of different colours. 
just a few basics. Okay, I'll let that go a bit tacky while we whack in some sandy colours and get some trees on that headland. Get a bit of that out the way. These pallets are great too, that paper pallets, you just tear it off and throw it in the bin, you've got plenty left. A good idea. All right, so we're going to need more white. And for all my darks, I usually use just a, a Prussian blue, which is a really dark, deep color. Totally different to these two. And burnt sienna. And I'll need some of that over here too for in a minute for the sand. Okie dokie. So I don't like to use black in this type of thing. I think it's good to mix up your own dirty dark colour. So it's sort of browny, bluey colour, but it's dark and nice. Here we go. Seems a bit dramatic, that's really dark. But once we highlight highlight all the foliage and stuff on the trees later, it'll come up good. So I'm scraping this quite thin too. I don't want it too thick because when we put our highlights on it'll mix. It'll be too muddy and too thick and messy. So I've scraped that back quite a bit so it's quite thin, like I said, so we don't get too much mess later. I'll just pop a couple of big bits of foliage. So it's just a nice tree line. So I'm just putting it on the, just on the edge, that last tip. So I can just drag a little bit on at a time. Really light pressure, I'm not pressing very hard at all. This is just, just dragging across that paint that's already there, that blue. And already it's a nice little silhouette of a tree line. Okay. All right, I'll leave that for a minute. Bit of Indian yellow. So Indian yellow with the white and a little bit of that burnt sienna. Burnt sienna and Indian yellow go really well together. Give you a nice earthy sort of a color. I'm going to put this down first as a part of the sandbar. So this will be our under colour. So a little bit of this will be shining through, but it's mainly going to be highlighted over the top of this. So I don't want it too thick. Look at that. 
Lovely. And back in that headland, it's not just trees, there's always a couple of lumps of rock and dirt and whatever might be up there. So I'll just whack a bit of that in. Okay. Now we want to make some green. What are we going to use here? This is a nice bright yellow, like a cadmium light. And we can just, oh no, there's none left. We'll get a bit more phthalo blue. I oh, know we don't. Just pinch a bit of that Prussian blue. Remember how dark that is? So we only need a little touch of that. Put it into that really bright yellow. I might get a bit more first. There you go. Nice bright green. So I'm only going to load up maybe the same thing, just that last part so I can control it a bit a little bit more, just really lightly, light pressure, just whack a bit of that on. So if I pushed hard, you're just going to get a big blob, big slab of colour, we don't want that, we just want a nice little controlled bits dragged on gently. We can always add to it later. So this is more of a mid sort of a tone for the for the foliage. I'll come back and put some really high light with some a lot lighter yellowy greens later on. So because of that light pressure, it's just grabbing the wet paint underneath in bits, which we want. Instead of big solid pieces of colour, it's just little bits of grab here and there. There you go, it's starting to look like a nice bushy headland. All right. So that's just those two colours mixed there. We're going to put a little tiny bit of that in. Keep it quite light in colour. So this is our sandy. Might even put a bit more yellow in there. And because we've already got this under here, as soon as we start putting that over, that's your beachy sandy sort of colour and you can use any sort of yellows and red combinations just as long as it's nice and light and fresh for that sand. Same deal with that little beach just up the top here. So the pressure on the palette knife, same as a brush, the harder you push, the bigger, you know, you big slabs like that if it's hard, whereas if you just touch it nice and soft, that's a big trick. Pressure's very important.
couple of rocks back up here. Yeah, looking good. Okay. So as you can see, we go through a lot of white. So that's why I get it in the big tubes. So now we can start whacking in some waves. And we'll start building up this sea water, make it look a little bit better than it is now. So you can see the texture, the butteriness of the, is that a word, butteriness? It's just buttery anyway, it's beautiful. It's exciting when you get a little bit of texture, it just looks so good. have your pliers ready. So a little bit of phthalo green I reckon always looks good in water. So phthalo green's got a nice, like the shallows and the sandy shallows always seems to be phthalo colours in it so we can add a bit of that. So just dragging it across lightly, it's just grabbing little pieces off the, off the knife. So there's really light pressure once again. That happens, that happens. Okay. I'm going to have another play with this French ultramarine again. Get a bit of that happening. So I'm doing the lateral strokes because that's generally the way the waves are, nice and long. So you just exaggerate that a little bit with this colour. And it's not really mixing too bad because I've left this quite thin, that first layer I put down. Anything I put on now seems to just drag over the top nicely, so you're not making mud. But every bit of that 
what you apply with the knife, all those little lumps and bits of texture, grab the light and it just keeps it busy. It looks good. It's just so much quicker and easier than a brush sometimes just to get that real, um, like a, I don't know, atmosphere almost. But you can see how the, this beautiful colour here, once you mix it next to the thalo blue, it just really gets a purple look to it. Yet on its own, it doesn't look purple at all. All right. Bit of wave action. This builds up over the time too, just dragging brushes and things, it's nice. Okay, now. <clears throat> A bit more thalo. That's such a beautiful colour, I love this colour. You can see I'm obviously not worrying too much about detail at all on this. It's just all about texture, colour, feel. All right. Uh, where's my nice bright yellow? Um, Bit more bright yellow. Oh, lighten up those highlights on the foliage. But before I do that, actually, what looks really good sometimes, you've got to be gentle with it. So a little bit of cadmium red light. Once again, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's just a nice bright red. So I'm not really putting too much on. It's quite thin. I just want it to grab a little here and there. Look at that. Beautiful. So I'm virtually just dabbing that. It's only just a really light pressure. Just grabbing a few little bits of red. Because quite often in the Australian bush and foliage, you get... Beautiful reds through the foliage. Just adds a little bit, I think. You don't need too much. So realistically, I haven't used that many colours here. And I've done the whole thing with that one palette knife, so... Limited... Tools required. 
There you go, just a little bit lighter, so. The blimmin' bright painting, but that's what we're after. And see the depth, the depth we're getting, because we've got the real dark mongrel colour and then the darker green and then some reds and then that real nice little highlight of the colour I'm putting on now, that nice yellowy look. Oh, sorry about the noise, that's a possum I've got over there living in my studio. Got a lot of possums here. They come in out of the rain. But I get big pythons come in after them, so that's not always good. shadow on those rocks, give them a bit of depth. All right, now we we'll whack some people in. Get a bit of action happening. So this is just burnt sienna. A bit of that leftover whitey looking stuff there. No detail. We just want a happy Want action. What have we got here? Some bathers, people bathing. Actually, what I'm going to do here, where am I? I've got a longer palette knife, it's a bit bent, a bit crook, that'll do. So it's a nice long one. So if I get a bit of white happening. I'll load that up a bit. I'm gonna do something brave. Right there, look at that. Confidence, confidence. Shadowy stuff in there. Sort of looks like a boat. That'll do. So scenes like this I love because of all this action you can put in with the people without mucking around too much. It just fills up with movement, kids playing. Um, 
Someone sitting down over here. So then we get a bit of dark. And if I've only got a little tiny bit on the tip here, just a couple of little dots. So if you're not trying to make anything in particular, you just want those shapes and expressions, impressions of people. Looking good, I say. Get a bit of yellow. Oh, that's mixed. That's why I like using these really bright colours because they just jump out at you. Blue, a bit of a towel or something there. So you can't really say I've painted any people at all, they're just blobs, but that's the whole style. Whoops, he's got a massive head on him, nearly made it blue, scratch him out. That looks good. So you just start to get all this beautiful action. All starts to take place. Uh, what have we got here? So this is just terps. I'm just going to make sure my brush is nice and soft. So if I mix this terps in here and just get it nice and runny enough, you do a little bit of line work. I just want You can see there's absolutely no detail here. It's just nice and free. Don't think about it too much. All right, here we go. We'll get a bit of this light color. And this will start to bring that to life. Just a couple of little impressions of a few branches and sticks. So when your friends look at this, once you finish, they'll say, oh, by Jingos, look at the detail you've got. And there's no detail, really. You've just been nice and free. Let your hair down and just tear into it. But colour like this on your wall, whoever walks in, they're going to look you can't walk past a paint like that without without having a good look because it just jumps out it's in your face that blues are just so beautiful these together and those greens and reds and everything this is what it's all about and you could do another another style it could take weeks of coming back and forward and adding little perfect little humans all through it but this is just such a beautiful feel this style Straight away, that looks like it's got a lot of detail. Just a couple of little flicks. Ooh. 
Where am I? Okay. This is a really tiny little brush. That's a Zero Pro Art. But, so it's not Pro Art, but Pro Art. Good brand. It's got to be. Okay, what else do we need? I know. Well, we've got the brush happening. Couple of little birdies. And I think we're pretty close to being finished. You know, you can whack a couple of dogs in or a few umbrellas. You do whatever you like. It's just all colour, movement, a bit of action. Might actually just, if I can find my knife, put a couple more people back in here. vibrating back in the distance there, that's really good. So there you go, palette knife. Good fun, good little instrument, that one silly little bit of blade there, you can do all that with lumps and all. There you go. Cheers. <laughs>